intelligence what is for you. Not the intellectual intelligence, but the heart. The intelligence that you're talking about is knowledge. And it's of the known. And we take what we know and some brilliant mind can create more through what they know. This is the intelligence of omniscience, of the totality. It's of the unknown. And that's where creativity comes from. Okay, and these two will never meet. They need to unify, but they will never be one. Because this is far beyond the intellect. Because it's connected to totality, to truth, to the absolute. This is connected to the duality of interpretation. You know, when something comes from God, it's pure. It's pure, unconditional love. It's pure water. But then it becomes filtered, depending on where it falls. Okay, and so there's different interpretations. And the interpretations are always evolving. You know, you remember at one point they thought the world was flat. And then someone discovered... And the Pope made Galileo renounce the fact that it was round. Because he'd written something saying it was round. And he said to the Pope, he said, I can renounce that. I can take that back. But it won't change reality. The reality is... It's round. He said, I can say it's flat, but it's still round. Okay, so he was evolving beyond. But it was still coming from here. So they're two completely different things. This is of the unknown, and this is an interpretation or an extension or an evolution of the known. Occasionally some genius comes and creates a new theory. Every time a Buddha comes, they say the same thing. The Buddha's always saying the same thing. The Christ is always saying the same thing. The enlightened person's always saying the same thing. It's a different interpretation because of the person. But ultimately... It never changes because it's the absolute. And this is always chasing behind that. And it's always creating the duality. Now, children that are eight years old are very much in touch with this. But they're being told to be successful you have to have this. You have to be able to compete. You have to be able to remember. You have to be able to interpret. You need to present it correctly. So it's all coming from the brain, but the intellect. Mm? And the ultimate experience is that there's a balance. That there's a balance. But ultimately this overrides. You notice as people get older, this starts to diminish, no? But what starts to expand? The peace, the love, that acceptance, that surrender to life. It is what it is. And they start to have that innate wisdom which is always there, but now that this has calmed down, they're more surrendered. 
And, you know, this is not everyone. But as a rule, it works like that. So the children start in absolute innocence. I've say, I'm saying this all the time, no? But it's an immature innocence. It doesn't know life. It doesn't know self. It's looking for identity, which is the human experience. It's looking for an external identity so it can take its place in the world. So it starts to leave the unity and it starts to become the I. And initially it conforms and then it makes a shift and it starts to challenge. And then it goes beyond that to come back, to have the mature experience but based in innocence. And that's the supreme consciousness. And it's who we are. So it's a complete journey. And this is what I'm saying. It always has to be like this. It's always like this. It's like the world's round. Everything's closed. Everything's always returning to the source. Always, always, always. It's infinite. Hmm. And, you know, another thing is we're always trying to define ourselves, you know, and it's so important to define ourselves with the most important thing. And that's uh, our um, divinity, that which is permanent, the love. We have to define ourselves as that. You know, we're always trying to find our sex, our preferences, our country, our likes, our dislikes, our ideas. But in reality, none of them are important because it doesn't make us who we are. It's just our presentation. But who we really are is ultimately the only thing that's important. And that's the unconditional love. Hmm? Come visit our webpage for books, movies, and our wonderful retreat centers. Isha's simple yet powerful system is transforming lives around the world. <laughs>